now five o'clock and the meeting's called to order. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Fowler. Present. Commissioner Scribner. Commissioner Sanders. Here. Commissioner Mello. Here. Commissioner McGibbon. Here. Commissioner Morris. Here. Commissioner McGuire. Here. Commissioner Couch. Here. Commissioner Rivera. Will you now follow me in the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag, please? We're now going to Mr. Knox uh, to introduce our new administrative assistant clerk. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, last month, I informed the commission that Gianna Munoz was stepping down as the administrative assistant slash clerk. Today, I'm happy to announce the hiring of Aaron Rojas. Out of over 220 resumes received, Aaron was both the most qualified and the best fit with our office. Aaron has been working part-time for several years while raising a family and is ready to get back into the full-time position as one of our daughters is starting college soon. Uh, as this is Erin's first time at the console, please be patient with her as she navigates the system for the first time. And I understand one of the monitors is out. So we're gonna have to do a voice vote on, on a couple of folks. So uh, be a little patient with us today. Uh, it would also help if when you make a motion, um, state your last name. So motion, Sanders, Motion, Fowler, that, that would help her learn who you are. It helped the chairman be able to differentiate who it is. It helps with our minutes, which is always helpful, which is always great. While we are sad to see Gianna go, we are excited to see Aaron step in and is already showing confidence in the ministry of duties and willingness to learn LAFCO, the LAFCO world. When you have a chance, please introduce yourself to Aaron. Okay, thank you, Mr. Knox. Um, we're now at the public comment part of our meeting, and uh, this portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not on this agenda and over which the commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record before making your presentation. Is there any public out there that'd like to comment? Um, I was just noted, uh, I moved, I skipped one here, so we're uh, down to, or we're back to number three, approval of the minutes of the March 20, 28th, 2019 meeting, uh, and Mr. Knox has corrections on that, correct? That is correct. Uh, according to the minutes, Commissioner Fowler seconded the approval of the February minutes. It also shows Commissioner Fowler as being absent, which is a really neat trick. Glad you could do that. Yes. Uh, we went back uh, to the instant replay and determined that Commissioner Sanders made the motion. Uh, that correction should be included with any motion to approve the minutes. Motion to approve is corrected. Couch. Second by McGuire. Please uh, uh, place your votes. McGuire's yes. Morris, yes. All eyes. We're on to number five, notice of public hearings. Kern LAFCO 2019-2020 final budget. Mr. Knox. Thank you. Before you is the proposed 2019-2020 LAFCO final budget. 
State law requires that the final budget be approved by June 15th, 2019. I went over the budget with some detail last meeting. I'm gonna provide some highlights this meeting and can go, over, go into more detail if you're interested in, in specific items. Up on the set screen and in your packet is a copy of the budget. I've included the percentages increase from the last budget in, in this one so that you can easily tell where the changes in the budget are happening. So as overall, the final budget for 2019-2020 will be very similar to the previous year's budget with a proposed 7% increase. I expect a similar number of annexations, detachment, reorganizations, MSRs, and sphere of influence changes in the next fiscal year, but expect the items before the commission to be more complicated. On the revenue side, um, the user fees will likely be the same amount. Uh, and as you're aware, um, agency contributions come a third from the county, a third from the cities, and a third from special districts. Uh, this will be offset by the carryover from this year, and I expect that uh, carryover to be approximately $75,000 to $80,000 range. Um, so we do have some money left over. I also expect that the state will reimburse us for the dissolution of Rosedale Rail Bravo RCD and annexation into Northwest Kern RCD before the end of the fiscal year. Our expenses came in around $20,000 and expect to be reimbursed for about 15,000 of that. I also wanna note that CalAFCO has a bill currently going through the legislative process to provide funding over the next few years for additional projects like this, for consolidations, dissolutions, uh, and uh, make it generally easier with fewer districts. Uh, on the expenditure side, uh, salaries, this category is the only change I have from the preliminary budget to the final budget. I have added an additional uh, $5,000 for salaries. Uh, salaries show a rise due to the increase in salary approved by the commission for the executive officer. Based on the quality of work, the EO recommends an increase in salary to the senior analyst effective at the start of the fiscal year. And with the administrative assistant clerk, I plan to use the funds budgeted for the unfilled receptionist position to compensate Gianna on a part-time basis to come in and continue to train the new administrative assistant. The part-time receptionist position will continue to be funded but not filled unless there are significantly more work to come. I may consider a summer intern at some point if the right person comes around. In going through the hiring process for the administrative assistant clerk, I realized that the last time the salary range was updated for this category was five years ago. In the coming months, I will bring back a recommendation to update the salary range with comparisons to other similar positions. I should also point out that the rate for the receptionist position is just slightly above the minimum wage rate. So that, that may be something we wanna consider as well. Uh, I also mentioned that I've been looking for office space. Um, right now, it looks like things are going well with our current um, property management to uh, lease that space we've been in for the last 22 decades again. Uh, they're willing to do some significant upgrades to the property, uh, which it sorely needs. Um, uh, and what they want in return is a five-year lease with 3% increase each year which is exactly the same as our contract has been the last two, two leases that we have signed. Um, uh, one thing they are throwing in, they are going to include all utilities for the building that we won't have to pay, uh, which I believe will become increasingly a better deal over time as rates are going up. I recently just saw something on PG&E saying they wanna raise rates again to cover all the mess that they've had lately. So I think, uh, uh, that may be a good part of the deal. If a deal can be reached, I will be bring back the lease agreement for the commission approval at the next meeting. Our, our, our um, lease is up next month, so it's good to get that done. Um, and one of the things we're trying to work out is for them to come, to do, come in and do the work, do it the week that we are at the CalAFCO conference. So we're not there most of the week anyway. We can shut down the office for the week, move everything out, they can get everything done, and we can move back in and be, be ready to go again. Uh, so it shouldn't take us out of our work schedule and cycle for very long. On professional and specialized services, Mr. Rice has procured a couple of servers, computer servers that KernCog was replacing. This is a large upgrade from the point-to-point -point office network 
uh, we currently use and will allow us to share information more easily and host our own website. We very much appreciate the county allowing us to use a, a part of their website system, but we are very limited on the size and type of, of information files we can place on their site. While the servers were at no cost, setup and continued operation will need IT support and additional software. I hope to absorb this in the budget category for this year. Uh, the reserves, the commission policy is for a reserve of 10% of the annual budget plus uh, accrued sick and vacation. Uh, the budget reserve from last year with this 10% will increase by $4,480. Last year, the sick and vacation accrued equaled $21,653. This year, the number decreases to 19,808 based on additional hours for Mr. Rice and myself, but an overall decrease with a payout to Ms. Munoz on her departure. So she'll be collecting those, those hours on uh, as, she's, as she's leaving. So with that is my recommendation to approve the 2019-2020 final budget as presented by the executive officer. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Uh, this time, would anybody in the any public comment uh, wish to make a comment? If not, any of the commissioners would like to uh, make a comment? Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, I have a question for Mr. Knox. You mentioned you expect this coming year to have more complicated issues come before us. What did you mean by that? So one, we have a formation of a district up in Weldon. Um, we're getting very close to um, starting to process that application. That'll be very exciting. We haven't created a new district in quite a while. Um, I possibly have some more consolidations of districts and maybe even a dissolution of a district. Um, um, we have opportunities up in the Fraser Park area to combine some areas, uh, some mutuals into a um, water district as they've been having water issues up there. Uh, so there are a number of projects that we know are on the horizon that aren't the simple one property owner is annexing into a city, <coughs> it's all consent, everyone's happy. It's, it's more, they're gonna be more complicated than that. I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's fun from this side. No further comment uh, from the commissioners. Uh, we'll now call for a uh, motion and a vote. Motion Sanders to accept. Second Mello. Please cast your votes. McGuire's yes. Morris, aye. Motion passed, all ayes. We're now on, on to uh, B and 1737, uh, Mr. Knox, the City of Arvin Municipal Service Review. Mr. Knox. Yes, I'm gonna handle both this one and 1740 uh, together. Uh, these items were originally brought to the commission in December of 2018, but were continued several times so that the city and county could work out several uh, required agreements. It has been brought to our attention uh, that the notice of exemption for the SOI amendment that staff accepted as part of the application last November and is included in your packet for consideration has been changed to a negative declaration, which is not in your packet. While both notices of exemption and negative declaration indicate that the, amend the amendment to the sphere of influence has no environmental consequences, proper notice has not been given and your commission has not been given sufficient time before today's meeting to consider the revised CEQA documents. Simply put, when the notice of exemption was received last year, a box was checked in our process. When the negative declaration was provided several months later, the change in the CEQA documents was not rec recognized. I missed the change in the, doc in the documentation and I take responsibility for that. Uh, we could have heard the MSR today and the SOI uh, sphere of influence next week, but the city of Arvin prefers that we hear them both here at the same time and the city of Arvin is here uh, to answer any questions you may have. Uh, but um, I must recommend a continuance of the Municipal Service Review and the Sphere of Influence Amendment until our next meeting. And that would require a vote okay. of continuance. Uh, would there any um, 
public comment on this uh, at this point. Uh, you good? Yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. Um, <coughs> any commissioners have anything to say on this issue? If not, um, I call for a motion. You know, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, we need a motion to continue to our next meeting. Yes. So move, uh, Couch. Thank you. Second, Fowler. Please cast your votes. McGuire, yes. Is it on? Morris, yes. Yes. Motion approved. All ayes. We're now on to uh, number six, public uh, project uh, review, City of McFarland annexation, Mr. Knox. Uh, Mr. President, uh, Chairman, I've got to recuse myself because they're my clients, so I'm gonna step out. Okay, thank you. Okay. This is annexation number 17, uh, proceeding number 1746. On February 5th, 2019, the City of McFarland submitted annexation number 17 to Kern Lafco. The proposal is to annex approximately 77 acres of land on five parcels, including one residence into the city of McFarland. The proposed area is located on the southwest corner of the intersection of Taylor and Garzoli Avenue. This area is within the city's sphere of influence has been planned for by the city's general plan. The area is zoned A, agricultural and residential 2.5 acres in the county and has been pre-zoned residential R1 by the city of McFarland. When it comes to taxation, a new tax split agreement was approved by both the city and the county that covers all annexations within the city's current sphere of influence, it is consistent with general plans, regional transportation plans, or specific plans. Uh, a portion of this is prime agricultural land, but not, not, all, all, not all of it is, is prime. Uh, there are no commercial crops currently being grown, almond trees, uh, at the end of their production, productive life have recently been pulled from the properties. This annexation is adjacent to property already developed is in, in the path of growth. There are no disadvantaged unincorporated communities nearby, although the city itself is considered disadvantaged. Um, it conforms the assessor's parcels. There's no functional overlap of services. A water supply assessment is included with this application. How much additional water will be used is unknown at this time. The water usage will be analyzed when the parcels are developed. Uh, this application does not increase or decrease housing. Uh, the property is pre-zoned residential and will likely increase housing if and when it is developed in the future. Uh, this project is consistent with commission policies. Uh, one of the conditions of the annexation is an indemnification agreement, which they have signed. Uh, there's a second uh, condition we need to put on this application. Uh, the county surveyor's office informed us that Taylor Road, and let me give you a picture of it. Sorry, this is a picture of um, the area that's being annexed into McFarland. And this is a picture of the correction. Um, the county surveyor's office informed us that Taylor Road has not complete, been completely included in the legal description or the map. Most of Taylor Road was annexed in, at the February meeting when the commission approved annexation 15, except for the western end. This leaves a road on the western end of Taylor only being annexed to the center line of the road and not the full width, which is our local LAFCO policy. I'm requesting that the map and legal description be corrected to include the full section of the road as is a condition of approval. Uh, affected and overlapping agencies and districts were notified. No comments were provided. The process required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act has been followed, including notices to affected agencies and any notices and publications required by law. The proposal has 100% landowner consent and the applicants have requested that notice hearing and protest hearing uh, be waived as allowed by government code section 56663. So it's my recommendation to consider the environmental documents adopted by the applicant, waive notice hearing and protest hearing and approve annexation number 1746 with the conditions set by the executive officer.
Is there any public comment uh, uh, to this annexation? Any commissioners like to uh, make a comment? If not, um, I call for a motion, please. Move for approval by Mars. Second by Couch, and thank you to your, Mr. Knox, to you and your staff. We're working with the city of the province. Please cast your votes. McGuire, yes. Mars, yes. Motion approve, all ayes. We're now on to um, number seven, public member appointments, Mr. Knox. Yes. Commissioners, today are you, being, you are being asked to fill the public member seat, the public member alternate, and we still have the restricted public member alternate seat open. To fill those seats, we have three and a half candidates. I say there are three and a half candidates because Commissioner Mello has indicated that after a long and distinguished reign on the commission, she no longer wishes to occupy the public member seat. But she would be willing to serve as an alternate if one of the alternate uh, seats is not filled by one of the other candidates. We thank you for that and understand. The other three candidates are Stuart Bauer, Jose Gonzalez, and Vince Zaragoza. The, the directions are provided for the candidates were that they could come up to the microphone and give a brief introduction of themselves and why they'd like to be on LAFCO. The commission has the opportunity to ask questions. The commission can then decide who uh, they choose to be the public member. In your packet are questions that have been provided to the commission in the past, but you're welcome to ask anything that you choose. Uh, I should also mention that we did advertise this opening in the local paper, placed it in our website, informed the county, cities, and special districts, as well as other interested parties. As for the requirement of the vote, the public member and the alternate public member shall be residents of the county of the appointed commission. I had no person appointed to the public member or alternate public member pursuant to this chapter shall be an officer or employee of the county or cities or special districts with, with, the territory, with territory in the county. And as for the vote itself, uh, a vote representing the general public appointed by the other members of the commission, the other members of the commission may also appoint one alternate member who shall serve pursuant to section 56331. Appointment of the public member and alter, alternate public member shall be subject to the affirmative vote of at least one of the members appointed by each of the appointing authorities. What that means is uh, the vote will be th uh, by the two supervisors, the three city council members, and the two special district members. One of those from each of those categories has to vote affirmative for this vote to go through. The public members do not get to vote on this one. Um, darn it. I didn't write the law. Um, so at, at this point, I'd um, like to ask, um, we'll just go in order alphabetical, Stuart Bauer to come up first, Jose Gonzalez, and then Vince Zaragoza. Wrote me down a little cheat sheet here. Uh, my name's Stuart Bogger. I've been a member of the Cal Lefko, uh, Kern Local Agency Formation Commission since 19 or since 2007. I've been involved in the annexation process before since before 1997. On the Citizen Advisory Committee, where I assisted in writing committee's bylaws, pamphlets out on FAQs on annexation and learning to live with a septic system. Everybody should have that. Uh, assisted in updating the annexation guide on the Citizen Advisory Committee's website. I feel that having been involved in the annexation process where the citizenry was having a very difficult time obtaining relevant information about how they could participate in the annexation process and have factual information so their voices and opinions could be heard in a timely fashion as required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act qualifies me for this position. 
I was also involved in making a presentation on behalf of the county supervisors to the Commission on Local Governance in Sacramento where input was sought and heard regarding the annexation process. Much of this presentation was used verbatim to amend the act. I feel a basic role of LAFCO is the coordination of local and timely boundary changes and local governmental boundaries. Review and assist in the preparation of spheres of influence for many local municipal jurisdictions to ensure municipal services are provided efficiently, economically, while agriculture and open space lands are not developed prematurely by encouraging infill. The role of the public member is to provide representation for the County of Kern citizens by listening to and allowing them to have their voices and views heard and then advocating for their collective desire. I do not have any conflicts of interest that will keep me from serving on the LAFCO Commission. I have no constraints or conflicts that would keep me from attending the LAFCO meetings. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Do any of the commissioners? Do any of the commissioners have any questions for Mr. Bauer? Oh. If not, um, uh, is there any public out there that would like to comment? We can go to the public at the end. Okay. Uh, uh, so, Jose Gonzalez. Good evening. My name is Jose Gonzalez. I'm president of the Greater Lamont Chamber of Commerce. I'm also the area manager for Self Help Federal Credit Union. Um, I bring a uh, diverse perspective, and um, as a community member and activist in the community, um, I'm always looking for what's best for our community. And active, as an activist, always looking for change um, to better our communities, to serve all of and everyone in our communities. Um, I am seeking this position uh, for the purpose to be able to expand my experience and my civic duties and be able to provide more information to our communities. A lot of the time we find ourselves that our communities lack a lot of information. And serving on this board uh, would be an opportunity uh, for me to provide more information to our community, educate them on the process of annexation and incorporation and special districts. Um, I feel that uh, I've been a part of this community for several years, um, serving in different um, areas and with community collaboratives, coalitions, um, as well as uh, president of the Great Lamont Chamber of Commerce, as and would like the opportunity to be able to provide more information to our rural communities, um, as a lot of them lack the, the information that they seek when it comes to services, and I think I would be able to fit that bill. Thank you. Thank you. Any commissioners uh, have any questions? If not, thank you. And Mr. Zaragoza. Good evening, Chairperson McGibbon and fellow LAFCO commissioners. I didn't bring my glasses, so I'm gonna have to strain my eyes here. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna give you a brief background, uh, statement who I am and why I'm interested in applying for the commissioner position. I assume uh, my uh, letter of interest in my resume was passed out, and uh, I won't go over that, it's pretty boring. But uh, <clears throat> my name is Vince Saragosa, and uh, I am interested in applying for this vacant position as an urban and environmental consultant interested in sustainable planning for healthy communities. I am interested in this position primarily because LAFCO objectives align with my personal and professional beliefs. Um, discourage urban sprawl, preserve agricultural land resources, and encourage the orally formation of cities and special purpose districts. Um, these three LAFCO objectives mirror my mission as a consultant and citizen. 
which is improve the welfare of people in their communities by shaping urban areas and neighborhoods into healthier and more efficient spaces. As a former Kern County Community Economic Development Planner for 10 years and the City of Bakersfield Principal Planner for 32, 22 years, I have worked in some capacity with every incorporated city within the county in many special districts and numerous county service areas. Matter of fact, one of my first positions with the County of Kern was working with, I think it was a water district. And the person to my left, Mr. Tom Schroeder, was the, uh, was the attorney. I can't remember which one it was, but I think you had just started many out. Years ago was that? Many years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Too many we'll years ago. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. Um, my public planning responsibilities were primarily in the area of infrastructure, such as water, sewer, drainage, and roads, housing and economic development, such as senior housing and business incubators, and public facilities, such as health clinics and senior centers. Even though I was born in Bakersfield, my adolescent years were spent in a small farming community, which is now the second largest city in the county, the city of Delano. My background in education has led me to be gainfully employed by the Federal Department of Interior at the local Bureau of Land Management Office in Bakersfield, which was my first uh, planning job, the County of Kern, which was my second planning job, and most recently, my final job with the City of Bakersfield in all, all, in all fields of urban planning and community economic, economic development. In conclusion, I'd just like to say that I've had public service now for over 32 years in my professional career and wanted to continue my civic duty in making a difference in the Kern County community by applying to become a commissioner of LAFCO. I'll be glad to answer any questions. Commissioners, have any questions? I had a quick question for you. Sure. During your time as a planner for the city of Bakersfield, did you work on annexations? There was a annexation I was working on, yes, and uh, I believe I had, um, uh, it was a very gracious real, uh, opportunity to meet one of your, your, I forget who the executive director was, it wasn't the one before you, it was another gentleman before you. And, Turpin. Yes. Bill Turpin. Right. Yes. And I believe we were doing some uh, demographic analysis and so I called his office and I asked for a map, and he provided the map very quickly. And I think the area was annexed at some point. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions by the commissioners? If not, um, we proceed to a vote, Mr. Knox. I think my first question for all of them is, if you are not picked as the, the, the regular member, would you be willing to serve as the alternate? Yes. yes. Okay, then that takes Commissioner Mello <coughs> You can, come, you can come back to the dais now, but you can't vote. And with that, yes. Um, do you have a question? I have a question. I understood that the vote for the alternate restricted public member was only done by county members and special district reps. That's correct. And we're going to take three separate votes here. And Good. I was going to explain that when we got Thank when you. we get there. Okay, uh, we now call for a um, um, motion uh, on the public member. Uh, do we announce the three names? How Actually, now if you want to take public comment would be good. Okay, do we have any public comment on the uh, uh, voting for a uh, uh, public member to the commission? If not, uh, a motion would be great at this point. Uh, do we announce the vote on the three names separately or on uh, somebody makes a motion? Yeah, you would need a nomination. We're, we're filling the, uh, the public member now, not the uh, alternates. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're, we'll take three separate votes. We'll take one for the public member first, then we'll take one for the public member alternate, and then a third one for the restricted public member, which as Commissioner Fowler pointed out, is only voted on by the county and the special districts. Okay, I'll need a motion, um, but I don't have the names in front of me to, for uh, 
the could, three we're voting on. Could uh, could I could I interject? There we go. Yes, go ahead. Um, I actually don't know that I was necessarily extremely clear on what we were doing tonight and how it was going to work. Um, I don't know how other folks feel, but I wonder, and I don't know how uh, Ms. Mello feels, but um, is there any harm in delaying action until the next meeting on the appointment so that I could actually review each of the resumes? And Because I, I guess I, I misunderstood what we were doing. I thought we were just appointing one member this evening. And it sounds like we're actually appointing three. You're, appoint you're, you're appointing one member and two alternates. Okay. So I, I, I guess I'd ask for uh, the commission to indulge me and in maybe waiting until the next meeting to. What we could, it, you'd have to have a vote of the commission to continue it. Um, what we do is we'd move it up to the, one of the first items in the agenda so that they could be seated as soon as um, the vote is taken. The, uh, the public member's seat is vacated as of the, the end of this meeting. Okay, it, so I guess I'd be, that, that would be my motion. I'd rather delay it so that I could then understand how we're also gonna do the voting. So is it tiered or do we pick one person and then does someone become an alternate by default or are we then appointing the, the alternate members? I'd like to understand how that will work first. You wanna answer that? You're on, you're on. For the public member, someone's gotta nominate someone. And if you have more than one nomination, then you vote on those two. And whoever gets the, ma the majority is the public member. Then you vote on the alternates. Same, same process. Okay. Well, I, I'm, gonna, I'm still gonna make that motion that we delay action until the next meeting. So that, uh, for at the very least, I can understand what I'm doing. May I ask a question, Mr. Chairman? Um, I, I'm perfectly happy to um, to do that. But are we going to have the applicants come up again, or we just do we have do we have to have we don't have to have that process? Everyone is has given they'd be their. Back, I presume. What's that? I, pr I presume they'd be invited back. Yes, of course. Yeah, they'd be invited back, but. Um, but it sounds like from what Mr. Knox is saying is that you know we need to have a member appointed rather rather quickly in the beginning of our meeting, and so can we can we fast track it? Obviously, we'd have public comment, um, and so if someone wanted to speak, of course we would allow them to do so. But we won't have presentations again from the applicants. If you choose to, that, that would be up to the chairman. Okay, chairman, I I don't know what your what your pleasure is on that. No, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Uh, I would suggest if, because I don't think everyone has a hard copy of all the resumes that have been printed. I know some of us got a hard copy and we can see, uh, you know, the background of, of these applicants. Um, I think it would be wise to maybe have a printed copy for everyone so they can review the, uh, uh, the resumes that they've seen. I know you probably could have seen them in the... <laughs> In, in, in the agenda, but there are, are like so many pages there towards the end that you may have missed them. So uh, that would be my suggestion, just maybe move it till the next meeting till everyone really has a chance to look at the rest. I think that's a great idea. In fact, the guy, the 28 year old that should probably be tech savvy did not know how to open this on Dropbox and would actually prefer to have paper agendas and paper materials moving forward. That's a story for another day. Do I have a motion to uh, delay? I, 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 I'll make that motion. I'll second. Uh, please cast your votes. Yes. No. Morris, aye. No, you don't. It's on an item that they don't have business with. Motion approved, all no. eyes. Okay. Okay. Madam Ginger or not. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, could, yes. before we leave commission items, could I uh, 
and maybe uh, make a request. Yes. Um, so, and I think this is the appropriate time, or at least that's, I think, what Mr. Schroeder told me. If not, tell me to shut up. But, so there is, so there was this uh, gray area for a while between the, the county of Kern and the city of Bakersfield with respect to annexation. So, in, and um, during that uh, gray time, uh, things change at the state level. One of the things that I understand has changed was AB 743. And I, I don't know if my staff, it, I think my staff might have met with you last week, Blair. Um, but I guess there's a, I am very interested in pursuing annexations at the city of Bakersfield. And I think there is a question, an unanswered question I'd like this commission to uh, answer um, with respect to what, in the context of AB 743, uh, a substantially surrounded area means, because I think that would really help us uh, as a, as uh, we prepare annexations for your consideration because my staff is telling me they don't want to waste a bunch of time doing things uh, I'm asking them to do if it's a, a moot point. Um, so I, I don't know what the, I don't know how the commission feels or how, what the most appropriate way to handle that, handle that is or if maybe Mr. Knox wants to uh, give us kind of an update on what that means at the next uh, LAFCO meeting uh, and maybe we can have, maybe we can deliberate and uh, consider some options then. I'll defer to you on what you think the best course of action is. There are multiple ways we can handle that. Uh, one is we have a policy committee here, uh, which we can run this question through and have that policy com uh, committee make a recommendation back to the commission. Or I can give multiple um, scenarios, bring it back to the commission and have you uh, deal with it directly. It's, both are, are legitimate ways of handling it. Could you tell me who sits on the policy committee? No. I, I don't know when the last, do I sit on the policy committee? I don't, I don't think so. I don't so. even know when the last time was that it met. Uh, we uh, we've only met once in the last two, two and a half years I've been that's, here. That's what I <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, I, I think it's a, it's a big enough question that, that probably warrants the full commission's consideration. I, I, I'd like to participate in the discussion. So my preference would be that maybe we get a report from you uh, either the next meeting or the next, whenever you think it uh, makes the most sense on, on how on what our options are and how we might proceed. Okay. Also, give some examples of what other counties have done. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Any further discussion? <laughs> yeah, I just want to make a brief comment. Um, well, let me ask a question. I think I'm on that policy committee. We haven't met in a long time, like you, as you said. Is that correct? I believe so. Um, we actually looked at this issue multiple times and we decided not to make a, what I'll call a hard and fast rule of this is substantially surrounded and this is not because we wanted there to be some latitude and flexibility. We looked at multiple examples of <clears throat> different annexations that were all very similar but they were all very different and you could, you could make the case either way. Um, so it's not as it's it's going to be more difficult, I think, than um, picking a percentage because you have different geographic layout, different layouts of different annexations and parcel uh, configurations um, that you might want to take into consideration, and we may or may not want to put in the policy. But I would suggest that we um, that the chair maybe consider reconfiguring the policy committee, letting the policy committee work on it, but including the um, Commissioner Rivera in the policy committee. And if I need to step off the policy committee to put him on it, that's fine with me too. But I'm not trying to get out of, get out of the work. I, I believe the policy committee consists of one supervisor, one city council member, one special district, and a public member. Mr. Chairman, um, yes. if I don't currently sit on that committee, I would like to be included as well if we're tacking on people. I was the one from the public on that committee. Okay. The committee, no, so, never mind. Can I jump in, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Since you are stepping off and you were on that committee, does that mean the chair is gonna have to appoint another public member or the committee's gonna have to be reconstituted anyway? before we meet. 
I can do it. It's at the uh, preference of the chair. And I don't know if it's if it's not agendized. Can he do it tonight, or can he do it at our next meeting? Okay, thank you. My lawyer says no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if that's a no, then is there? A, we can't proceed uh, at this point. Well, you can you could direct the city the. Um, executive officer to put it on the agenda for the next meeting as, as uh, Commissioner Rivera asked. So that then at that point, and, and, and he could also add onto the agenda appointing a policy committee and the commission could then re refer it to the policy commission, commission at the next time. It just, it, it, it's not a big deal. Just uh, okay. get it on the agenda. <clears throat> okay. Happy to do that. Okay. Uh, Mr. Rivera will be on the uh, policy committee. Then. Well, you're not going to appoint a policy committee tonight. No. No. But, okay. Yeah. We're going to make sure he's on it. Is that it? <laughs> Is that, okay. <laughs> okay. Any further discussion on this? Um, if not, uh, Commissioner Fowler, will you come up here, please? Commissioner Fowler is going to make a presentation to uh, Virginia Ginger Mello uh, for her 20 years of service uh, as a public member of Colonel Ashville. It is my pleasure on behalf of the full membership of Lasco Kern County as well as our executive officer and staff to thank you for your long years of service, excellent service. Thank you for your commitment and great attendance record and your <laughs> perseverance in all of our challenging issues. Thank you, Ginger. I appreciate you. you so much. Thank you. Um, any other commissioners would like to comment on the retirement of uh, Commissioner Mello? See you at the next meeting? No? Is that a, isn't that a requirement or no? To supervise us? I will be sitting out there at a good number of the meetings. So be careful, grandson. <laughs> yes. I have a granddaughter his age. Then next to him's my brother. He, sorry, David, I can't claim you as a child. She's over There's no here. resemblance. <laughs> yes, you're my child. I have another child over next to her. That's Zach. My sister's beyond. This is a family. You just didn't know it. <laughs> I have another son down there. That makes me one of the older ones up here, not just in my 20 years, but in age also. And it's, been, it's been a pleasure. I'd, li I'd like to thank her for her years of service. You really have done a good job. You've been very conscientious, and you are exactly the type of member that we need on boards and commissions like this. So thank you very much for your service. Thank you. Uh, we're now on to number eight, general business. Uh, approval of the claims list number 19-4, Mr. Knox. I'll move approval. I have no comment. Couch. Second, Fowler. Please cast your votes. Yes. Morris, aye. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay, um, 8B is executive officer miscellaneous items, Mr. Yes. Knox. Uh, last year, um, the commission hired Brown Armstrong to conduct the audits on a yearly audit on LAFCO. Uh, we've been through the first audit. The way the contract re read, it was a one year contract with two, a two year extension. Uh, unless there is commission, oh, 
I should also mention uh, Brent Armstrong has agreed to lower the rate by $1,000 from last year. Uh, the, the first year is the toughest because they're collecting information, a lot of information they don't have. Uh, unless the commission has an objection, I will ex extend the contract and we can start preparing for the next audit. I see no objection. Uh, one of the things we've been trying to do in the office is to uh, do as much, much digitally as we can. Uh, we have old stack of old maps that we cannot discard that's taking up precious space. Uh, in order to uh, digitize those, we need a large format scanner. Uh, Mr. Rice has, has uh, been searching for one from uh, different agencies around the county and we haven't found one where we can steal or get cheap. Uh, so we may have to go out and buy one, but we're gonna keep looking. Uh, but I'm gonna try to buy one here soon. Uh, it's under, hopefully under my threshold of what I can spend uh, without commission approval, but um, if not, I will bring it back to you. But we need, we need to do that soon. Also wanna mention that uh, uh, April 10th through 12th, your staff attended uh, the Calafco workshop in San Jose. This included Ms. Ro Mrs. Rojas, who, who agreed to come and be subject to our immersion technique of LAFCO training. Each, each of us went to different breakout sessions. I, I specifically learned um, of improvements we can make to our public notices. I have uh, been using pr proposals and applications interchangeably when they are not. Uh, and mostly I learned that Cal AFCO feels pressure from the state legislature to make uh, municipal service reviews mandatory. Uh, but they have not put any of that language in a specific bill yet. Uh, just be aware that that is something that continues to be on the horizon. With that, our next meeting is Wednesday, May 22nd, 5 p.m. here at the Board of Supervisors Chambers. Any further comments by the commissioners? If not, we're adjourned.